guys, so today I thought we would do a proper dog care video and talk about some of the items that you're going to need when you first get your dog. So I'm going to go through some of the things you'll need, why you'll need them, and I'm also going to show you some images and examples of what those things may look like. The most important thing on any animal list is of course food and water. Now of course water is fairly easy, you can give them tap water if your tap water is drinkable, you can give them bottled water if you prefer to do that, you can give them fountain water, whatever kind of water you want to give them, as long as it's clean and as long as you top it up daily and make sure they've always got water access, then that is sorted. When it comes to food, you've probably got a million and one different choices. Not only are there different brands of food, but there's also different types of food. You can feed kibble, you can feed wet food, you can feed raw food diets. It's just as it is with cats, there's loads of different options. What I would suggest doing is doing lots and lots of research into it. Look online, speak to your vet, speak to you know anyone you know who has knowledge and experience in feeding dogs, and try and get the best diet for the budget you have. The amount of food you feed depends on a couple of different factors, including your dog's weight, your dog's age, and of course the type of food you're feeding as well. This really does require a lot of research when it goes into choosing the food for your dog, but as long as you're comfortable with what you're feeding them, and as long as your dog seems healthy and happy, and your vet agrees that they're healthy and happy, then there really shouldn't be anything to worry about. You of course are going to need some bowls for putting that food and water in and again there are a few different things you need to consider with this. The size is the first thing. If you have a bigger dog you're of course going to need bigger bowls and if you have a smaller dog you're going to need smaller bowls. There's also the material they're made out of. You can get plastic, ceramic and metal bowls and to be honest that's really up to you what kind you want to feed them from. There are also special designs of bowls like slow feeders for example and these are great because they allow your dog to eat their food more slowly. Now not all dogs will need slow feeders but if your dog does like to eat its food really really quick that's not really good for them so it's a good idea to invest in one of these slow feeder bowls they're a little bit more expensive but they're totally worth it because it'll allow your dog to eat more slowly and it'll be more healthy for them in the long term you also need to remember to regularly clean your dog's bowls, especially their food bowl, because as they're eating their food, they are licking around the bowl, they're getting all their germs in there, and of course there's little particles of food left over, and that can cause bacteria to start growing in there. And think about yourself, for example, you wouldn't eat off a dirty plate, so why would your dog want to eat off a dirty bowl? So after each meal, you should give the bowl a quick rub round, dry it out, make sure it's nice and clean, and then you can go on with feeding for the next meal. Your dog is of course going to need somewhere to sleep and once again we've got to consider the different factors in choosing a bed Again, things like size and material and also the season because the type of bed you give your dog is going to depend on how hot or how cold it is at that type of year or what kind of climate you live in. If you live in a hotter climate or your summers get very, very hot like they do here, you're going to want to consider that when choosing the bed. What we use in the summer is just a simple rug that you can buy for just putting anywhere in your house. We just pop that down in place of the dog bed and the reason we do this is just because you really don't want your dog to have this big snuggly kind of duvet like bed in the summertime because they're gonna be uncomfortable and the bed is gonna get stinky and it's just not gonna be nice and your dog probably isn't gonna use it in the winter time you want the complete opposite of that so something that's really snuggly and cozy and thick something that's gonna keep them really really warm and it's gonna be really inviting on a colder night Cleaning the bed regularly is very important, so you've got to consider how you're going to go about cleaning it. If you're gonna get a bed that you want to put in the washing machine, for example, is it gonna fit in your particular machine and is it machine washable? If you're going to wash it by hand, make sure you have the right products for that and make sure you're not gonna use anything that is going to damage the material. Dog collars are very, very important. Not only do they allow you to have instant control of your dog if you need to in an emergency situation, but if your dog ever gets out of your home and gets onto the street, people can see that it's owned, it's less likely to get picked up by the pound, and especially important if they have a little name tag on it or an identification tag with your phone number on there, it means if they get out and someone finds them, they can see the phone number on there, they can ring you up and your dog can be returned home as soon as possible. You also need to consider getting your dog 
microchipped because although the name tag is a brilliantly quick way of getting your dog returned home to you if they ever go missing, if they ever lose that name tag or the entire collar, then they still have another form of identification. And if they get picked up by the pound or by someone who takes them to a place that scans for microchips, then they will still be able to find out that the dog is owned and contact you and return your pet to you. Most dogs need walking every day and some dogs need walking twice a day so you're of course going to need a lead in order to walk them. Not only is a lead great for walking but it's perfect for training your dog to behave correctly in the home when they first come to live with you. It's great for toilet training them around the house and it's great for keeping them under control. When you choose a lead you'll need to consider the strength of the lead itself and the comfort of the handle. You'll need something that's strong enough to restrain your particular dog. If you have a bigger dog you're going to need a stronger lead of course and you want to choose something with a comfortable handle on it so that if your dog ever does pull away from you you're not going to get a damaged or injured hand. When you're picking out a lead don't only look at the strength of the material itself but the strength of the clasp on the end. This is the bit that's going to attach to the collar or to the harness of your dog and you need to make sure that's really strong and secure because you don't want them pulling away and breaking it and then you'll end up losing your dog. It's definitely worth spending a little more money to get a strong and comfortable lead. It is an investment. It will last for many, many years so don't be afraid to spend a little more money on this thing. If you have a bigger or stronger dog, I definitely do not suggest getting the extendable leads for full-time use. Get them for when your dog is younger, when you can't trust them off of the lead, just so that they can have a bit more freedom when you're going into a field or a dog park or something like that, just so you can switch your lead over and they can run around a bit and then you can switch them back to their proper lead and walk them safely along the street. If you have a very small dog, you can consider getting one of these extendable leads. However, make sure you check the weight on the lead itself it will say on the packaging what weight dog it is suitable for so that you don't get one that is too weak and that may break if your dog pulls on it how often you brush your dog really depends on their coat type. If they are long haired or they have thicker hair, then you're gonna need to brush them more often, probably a couple of times a week. If they are very short haired, then you probably don't need to brush them more than once a week. And if they're somewhere in the middle, you kinda just have to decide for yourself. The type of brush you get for your dog also depends on their coat type. There are many different types of brushes out there, and if you get the wrong one, your dog's coat may suffer for it. So make sure you're choosing the right one do some research online to find out what brush you need for your dog's particular coat type and if you're really lost just go and ask your local groomer for their advice. Toys, toys galore. Every dog needs some toys to play with, things to keep them entertained, especially if you're not around all the time. When you first get your dog, I would recommend getting a variety of cheap toys. Now, I don't mean cheap material, I just mean cheap in cost. You don't want to spend a fortune on it because, for all you know, your dog might just rip it apart or they might not use it at all and then it'll be a waste of money. So get loads of different types of toys, everything from squeakers to soft toys to pull ropes to balls, things like that. Find out what your dog loves. Once you know what they love, you can get them some more expensive stuff as long as you know they're not going to destroy it and you can spend a little more money on the things they really, really like. I would also recommend getting some interactive toys that you can play with with your dog. So again, things like balls and frisbees, which you can throw for them and tub toys, which are also great. Interacting with your dog and playing with them is a wonderful way of building a strong bond between you. So it is important that you take part in playing with them at least once a day. So now I'm going to talk about a few optional items. You don't have to have these if you have a dog, but you may prefer to have them. These are all fairly popular things that a lot of dog owners now have. So you may want to consider getting them for your dog. Harnesses are completely optional, although more and more dog owners are using them these days because they do allow you to have great control over your dog. Just like when choosing a lead, make sure you get something that's strong and comfortable. You can get lots of different harnesses. Some of them are very cheap in not only their material, but they're also uncomfortable for your dog. So definitely look into the different types of harnesses you can get. You can buy some really nice padded ones and consider spending a little more on this kind of investment as again, it's gonna last you a really a long time. Clickers are awesome little things and they can make training a lot quicker. Not every dog responds well to a clicker, but the majority of dogs do. So if you're really serious about training, it's definitely something you want to get your hands on. 
Again, if you're serious about training, then training treats should be on your list. These are slightly different to regular treats as training treats tend to be smaller. You can make them yourself from home. You can just give your dog a little bit of their favorite type of human food um, and that can work really well. But when choosing your training treats, consider the fact that you'll need to have a lot of them on you at the time of training and they need to be low fat because you don't want your dog pigging out on things and getting chubby during training. And they also need to be desirable to the dog. If you're you're using boring treats, your dog is less likely to cooperate with training. Deodorizing spray can be super, super useful, especially if you have a lot of soft fabrics in your house, if your dog's bed is made of a soft fabric, if they're allowed on the sofa or on your bed or on the carpets, anything like that. Getting a pet friendly deodorizing spray for spraying around your home is definitely going to make a big difference to you. I've put shampoo on the optional list just because I know a lot of owners like to take their dogs to the groomers and have them washed and cut and everything there. Personally, I don't do that. I just do my dog at home, saves a lot of money. And to be honest, we get the same kind of results. So if you're going to do it from home, make sure you get a shampoo that is dog friendly. If you go to your local pet shop or even the pet aisle of your local supermarket, you should find loads of different brands. Make sure you check the ingredients, especially if your dog is allergic to something that you're aware of. I would suggest getting something that's very simple and straight to the point. Nothing with these fancy extras like you can get whitening shampoos and things like that. I find those a little bit iffy. We currently use a puppy shampoo, which is actually made for uh, more gentle skin. Although John is an older puppy, he is still a puppy, and I just feel more comfortable using stuff that's made to be more gentle on the dog's skin. Remember, if you are going to bath your dog from home, try not to do it more than once a month unless they desperately need it. If you do it too often, it can cause damage to their skin and it can cause damage to their fur and wash away the natural oils. So try not to wash them too much if you don't need to. Getting your dog's fur and nails clipped is again something that can be done at the groomers, but if you want to save money, you'll definitely need to invest in some decent dog hair clippers and some decent and safe dog nail clippers. Just like with choosing a brush, if you're really unsure of what kind of clippers to get, then just go and talk to your local dog groomer. They should be able to offer you some advice and they may even be able to suggest some brands to you. The final optional thing to have for your dog is child gates and these are amazingly useful if you have an area in your house where you don't want your dog to go. Now you can of course train your dog to stay out of them, that would be the best possible thing, but when they're younger and they don't know where they're allowed to go and it takes a little longer to train them, it's a good way of keeping them out of there without having to worry that they're going to accidentally wander in or sneak in when you're not around. So there is my list of items that you'll need for your dog and I know it's a long list but dogs are a long commitment. Never forget that, never go into owning a dog lightly and always adopt where possible. So if you found this video useful don't forget to leave us a thumbs up. You can also share this video with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!